So my name is Lindsay Ahern. You might be surprised to hear there's actually only two Lindsays in EMEA and LinkedIn, and myself and Lindsay Browning. So what's the chances that we both take the same slot? So I work on the insights team here at LinkedIn, and it's my privilege to be on that team because as an analyst, LinkedIn is the place you want to work if you imagine the data set that I have to play with every day. So what I do is I work with our largest clients and I create custom insights to advise on their business strategies. So today what I wanted to do was to offer you guys some advice on how you can make data-driven decisions to really have actionable things that you can take away from today, how you can run your business more effectively. So what we're going to talk about is the link between Moneyball and recruitment. Who's seen the movie Moneyball? Can I have a show of hands? Okay, about 50%. So before we start, I'll tell you a bit about the movie, just to give you all a bit of context. So Moneyball is a baseball movie about the Oakland A's. The Oakland A's are a team who have quite a small budget, probably five times less than the Yankees who were winning the league. So the Oakland A's were really struggling, as you can imagine. So their manager, Billy Bean, decided to get creative. He thought, what can I do to really make my team win the league with a very limited budget? And what he did is he started looking at the player's behavior, managing patterns, and he identified a compatible group of players on a team that could make a really good team that ultimately won the league. Not surprising me. So I suppose bar charts and stats aren't something that you'd really associate with sporting activities. In 2002, this was like a first stab in baseball at using stats and metrics. Things have moved on since then. I was actually preparing this presentation on Sunday on the sofa, and you can't escape football in my house anyway, so there's definitely stats everywhere you look. So where's the link? For me, the same revolution is underway in recruitment at the moment. I'm sure you can empathize with this statement. We search for the right candidates, but it turns out another big firm caught the fish faster. I suppose where you can have that leading edge is to start using data effectively. If you feel like you're the underdog recruiting for a certain role, you can really use this to your advantage and start using data effectively to win the right talent at the right times. At LinkedIn, especially in my team, we have a saying, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So the first place we're going to start today is figuring out what is the data you want to look at. The whole thing about big data is we have so much data we can look at. It's about making it really simple and defining what do I want to look at first. So it all starts with the LinkedIn profile. All of our data ultimately boils back to the LinkedIn profile. As David mentioned, there's 238 million members on the LinkedIn platform. What's really interesting about this is that data is deep. So in the case of William here, we can see he's director level. We can see he works in Exceed Recruitment Solutions. And we also know that he's based in London. That makes things really powerful. And what's unique is it's real time. It's constantly updating. That's completely unique to LinkedIn. As members join the platform, as people update their profiles, we know more and more about them, and we can help you with this data set. So how do you use it in your day-to-day -day life? We're going to cover three Ps today, and I'm going to use these three Ps to tell you how you can take LinkedIn data and use it effectively to make business decisions. The first one is to plan using talent pool analysis. Secondly, how can I prioritize who I'm going to talk to? And lastly, and most importantly, how do I put this into practice? So starting at the top of the funnel, how do I use talent pool analysis to identify the right pool of people I want to talk to? Probably the most powerful way you can do that is by sizing up a market and setting expectations with your clients. Have people heard of the phrase purple squirrel? So in the recruitment industry, Purple Squirrel, as you can imagine, is a very difficult role to fill, if not sometimes impossible. So for example, if you were asked to fill 10 roles of risk analyst in Liverpool, your instinct tells you through all your experience, that's going to be a really difficult thing to do. But you're relying on your relationship with your client to go back to them and convey that message that it's going to be difficult. Now using LinkedIn data, you can have a very factual, data-driven conversation and explain to them why it's going to be difficult. And you can also make suggestions of alternatives. So to give you a real-life example, Hayes Recruitment is one of our large clients. 
and they use the LinkedIn recruiter tools really effectively. So they now take those conversations and show the clients exactly why those roles are difficult to recruit for. Let me show you an example. So LinkedIn recruiter tools are not only a powerful sourcing platform, which is what you commonly think of them as, you can also use it as an analytics tool. I have access to the background database. I can play away in that. And I actually use LinkedIn Recruiter all the time before I get stuck in, because it's a really easy tool to use, and I can dive in and figure out what numbers I'm looking at. So if a Hayes consultant is trying to find a risk analyst in the United Kingdom, for example, they can see here that's 90,000 people. Not bad. But their requirements were in Liverpool. And now we have 419 members based in Liverpool. This role is going to be more challenging to fill. And where it gets more challenging is the client has asked for a risk analyst with three to five years experience. There's 57 people in that talent pool. If you were to try and recruit those people, it would be quite difficult. Now you can go back to that client and tell them exactly why it's going to be difficult. Is this useful? This is something that you can take away today and jump in straight away if you have access to LinkedIn tools. So we know what our supply of talent is. But what's also interesting is if we look at how in demand is that talent. So what's your competition going to be like? We know there's 57 risk analysts in Liverpool, but are they in demand or not? So for our largest clients, what we also do is we look at how in demand people are according to location. So perhaps as an alternative to Liverpool, you can check London. And you see there's a really high supply but the demand is also really high as well. So although there's more, it's still going to be difficult to recruit. So Liverpool, as you can see, has a small supply. So perhaps as an alternative, you could suggest that they locate the risk analyst team in the Birmingham office, where the supply is higher and the demand is lower. It's going to make your life easier, and there's more chance of a faster turnaround on those roles. The other thing that we look at is, as part of these at talent pools, we have survey data where we ask our members in those talent pools what's really important to them when they're looking for a job. What we found is for risk analysts, excellent compensation and benefits, strong career path, and challenging work are the three most important areas. So how that's interesting is a Hayes consultant can now tailor the in-mail or tailor the job ad and make it really actionable and really engaging for that talent pool. So as we worked through these talent pools late last year, what we started to see was the same roles came up over and over that in Europe were really, people were really interested in. So they are technical salespeople, software engineers, financial services, marketing professionals, and students and recent grads. How many people in the room have a role open at the moment for one of these roles? Over half, great. Because the good news is, if you haven't seen these reports already, they're publicly available. So you can access these reports today and find out about the supply, the demand, and also what's most compelling to people in those talent pools by typing in lnkd.in forward slash plan. So that's the first P. So probably most powerfully, you can use LinkedIn data to set expectations with clients. And you can also become an advisor, so you can start to make recommendations about alternatives of how they can speed up their recruitment and sourcing. Moving on to the next P, now that you've identified who's in your talent pool, how are you going to find out who you're going to talk to in that talent pool? Not everybody in there is going to be right for you. So let's just take another example. This guy on the left is a software engineer. He is clearly not working on the latest technology, obviously very smart if he's able to work that computer, but the chances of him responding to one of your in-mails is pretty slim. Whereas this guy, maybe he's a little bit too excited, but he's much more likely to reply. So how do you make sure that you're talking to more people like the guy on the right and eliminating the people on the left? That's the big question. So. One of our clients, Earthstream Global, recognized the importance of going all in with LinkedIn and mobilizing their employees as brand ambassadors. They recognize that at every single touch point that they have an opportunity to engage with members, they should, to make sure that that talent pool is really engaged and ready to talk to them when there's job opportunities available. 
So Earthstream attracts 14,000 potential placements viewing their employee profiles every, every month. They want to make sure that when people visit their profiles, they're going to be the people who are relevant talent, so they want to make sure that they're telling them the right things in a very competitive oil and energy industry. Other touch points we have on LinkedIn, the LinkedIn company page. So the LinkedIn company page you can use to draw talent in. As you can see in this example, Orion Group have a compelling um, company page that also says a lot about their brand and their values. By having a very strong presence on LinkedIn, they've managed to attract 11,000 members to follow them on LinkedIn. The reason those followers are really powerful is when they have a job opportunity, they have 11,000 people they can choose from to target those job opportunities and let them know they're available. They're already very warm, engaged, potential prospects. So how do we tie all that together? How do you know how well you're doing in the market at the moment for a particular audience? So the first, we here at LinkedIn developed a metric called Talent Brand Index. So what that is, is how likely is a member to engage with you on LinkedIn? It contains two elements, Talent Brand Reach, which is people who are viewing your employees' profiles and connecting with you. They're showing an interest and they know who you are as an employer. But people who are engaging are going the next step. So they're researching your company and career page, they're following your company, and they're viewing or applying for jobs. So they might not want to work with you right now, but they're really interested in you as a company. In the case of Orion Group, we can use those values. We see that their reach is 215,000, and their engagement is 69,000. That converts to a talent brand index of 32%. As an arbitrary number, it's not so powerful. What makes it really powerful is when we compare that to peers. So in today's presentation, the peer set's anonymous, but it gives you a really good idea that Orion are the employer group of choice after all their work they've done, getting a strong presence on LinkedIn. So if they want to recruit, say, a project manager, we can also use our breadth and depth of data to figure out that project managers are going to be much easier for them to engage than HR professionals, for example, and they can adopt their strategy accordingly. The last thing I wanted to call out on how to prioritize is some research that my team have done have found that the more that you engage people at different touch points at LinkedIn, the more chance you have of them responding to your communications. So members who are engaged by, being, or by following your company, clicking on your jobs, and viewing your page are twice as likely to respond to an in-mail. So it's worth putting that effort in beforehand with the talent pool that you're particularly interested in. So to recap, first you need to identify your potential placements. Then you need to benchmark against peers and diagnose where your strengths, where your weaknesses are, and where you need to get better. So lastly, how do you put all this into practice? So obviously we've covered a lot in 20 minutes today, but the first thing I want to say is you don't need to create a new workflow. You can keep this simple. There's some things that you can do today that can just enhance your current workflow. So for me, I think the most powerful one is to set expectations by sizing up a talent pool. You can download the talent pool reports that we have readily available. And also, you can talk to your LinkedIn representative if you want to know more about your talent brand index for your company particularly. So hopefully today, we can, I, you now know more about how to plan using talent pool analysis, how to prioritize, and how to put things into practice immediately after this event. As I said at the start, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So start figuring out what data you want and where you can find it and talk to us about how we can help you.